Welcome back to CreatorView Chronicles, the video series where I document the whole journey of building my indie app. CreatorView, this is the third episode. If this is your first time, go back and check out the first two to get all the context. Because in this episode, we're specifically talking about how I designed my MVP, or minimum viable product. And by design, I don't mean what it looks like, pretty colors. I'm talking about like structurally, like what features am I including in the MVP and then why. So like I mentioned in the last video when talking about my target customer, I really narrowed it down, right? YouTubers in the Apple ecosystem only, iPad only, that was an MVP decision because, you know, making an iPad app and a Mac app, yes, Swift UI does a lot of the heavy lifting for you, but it still takes a lot of work to get that Mac app to a good place. And because I wanted to get the MVP out as quick as possible, well, maybe not as quick as possible is the best way to describe it, but I didn't want to be spending six months on my MVP, put it that way. So I scrapped the Mac app for the MVP. That will eventually come in a few months, of course. But again, for MVP purposes, iPad only. And I'm also not doing any design right now. Well, I mean, I'm still making it look respectable, but I'm basically just making it look like an Apple app. So using default Apple stuff, fonts, all that stuff. I'm not hiring a designer to come create some unique looking app. I'm sticking with just, again, Apple default looking stuff. And there's really two reasons. One is the app is gonna change so much. At this point, it's like an amoeba. Like it's just, there's no point in designing final screens. Everything is so fluid. So that would have been a waste of time. And the other reason again is time savings. Like just sticking with the Apple default stuff saves a lot of time at this point in development. Maybe sometime down the road, I'll hire a designer to come through, put a coat of paint on everything and make it look unique and interesting. I don't know if I'll do that, maybe I will, but now is certainly not the time to be doing that. An interesting thing about the Creator View MVP is it's kind of like an MVP of MVPs. You're gonna get real tired of me saying MVP in this video, that's for sure. What I mean by that is if you look at these tabs over here, I have dashboard, income, schedule, taxes, like each one of those tabs in and of itself is like an MVP of that feature. For example, you're looking at like the basic scheduler. I have a lot more ideas that I just can't quite implement yet. The income tab, I have so many things I wanna do with this like spreadsheet looking thing. And then the next screen you see here is all the charts and stuff. So many data visualization things with animations that I wanna do. But again, the MVP has to be pretty narrow and possible to get out within like a month or two, right? Like I said, with all the ideas and stuff I wanna do with this app, I would be developing for the next two years and never launch. So you have to launch a product, which I guess I haven't really even like defined an MVP. Minimum viable product, meaning you want to launch something to get it into customers' hands to start getting customer feedback. Because even though I am like the target customer, you know, you never know how other people might use it. They may have great ideas, they may hate something. So getting it in customers' hands ASAP is vital. There's a famous quote in Startup Land by Reid Hoffman, founder of LinkedIn. Uh, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your app, you launched way too late. I, I probably didn't quote that directly, but the idea is that if you're not embarrassed by what you put out there as your MVP, you waited too long. I don't think I'm gonna adhere to that completely because I don't think I'm gonna be embarrassed by what I put out, but I'm also not gonna spend the time to make it perfect, right? I am gonna try to get something out there ASAP. So that's the reason that each one of these tabs is like an MVP in and of itself and that I'm putting out the bare bones version of the feature and over time I will build upon it, expand it and make it more robust. Another reason for deciding to go iPad only was to again, narrow my customer base in the beginning. In addition to of course the Mac app would have taken a lot longer, but like I mentioned in the previous video about my monetization strategy and how I want to grow like financially in this app, this ties into this iPad only app because it's so narrow. Again, YouTubers in the Apple ecosystem that use their iPad a lot. It allows me to really focus on these customers because again, I expect to have like five of them for the first year, if that. So I can focus on them, work with them to really make the product great slowly over time. Again, I'm in no rush to grow this thing. So you've seen some screenshots, but let's actually talk about the process of how this all came together. So when I was thinking about what I wanted my minimum viable product to be, uh, I started off with just my notes app. Again, I have way too many notes. Uh, but basically I, I put a header for each screen and basically bullet pointed like three features for each screen that were must haves for the MVP. Not nice to haves, not it would be cool if, no, absolute necessities. That's what I started with. And then from there, I started drawing out the screens in my Good Notes app, which you're seeing screenshots of now. That was step two in the process. And that started to materialize the ideas and then the next step was uh, in Sketch, the Sketch app, where I put a little bit of color to it, but not like a full-blown design. But this step is key. So I'm not going for final designs. I'm really, this is like the skeleton of what I will build. 
And as I'm building each one of these sketch screens that you see, I'm kind of building the app in my head, at least from a big picture perspective. Let's take a look at this income spreadsheet view as an example. And this is the nice part about designing your own apps as a developer, is you know what you're gonna have to build so you can solve some problems like ahead of time. So I'm looking at this screen, I'm like, man, what if they have 10 income streams? So, okay, so I gotta make this middle part horizontally scrollable. And then I'm starting to think about, okay, if I'm gonna handle dynamic type, you can see this is a very information dense screen. So how am I gonna handle this screen when the font is all blown up? And you know, maybe I can make it a vertical scroll view. The point is, is that as a developer, I'm thinking about all of these things as I'm designing the screen so I can make my future self life easier by not designing something that doesn't work well with all that, right? I'm trying to solve all these potential problems ahead of time by, again, big picture building it in my head, right? And by big picture, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a scroll view, there's gonna be a V stack, there's gonna be an H stack, right? Just, again, the big puzzle pieces of how I'm going to build it are being handled right now. Now, of course, you have to set your expectations with that because there's no way you're gonna solve every problem ahead of time. But if you can take care of the, the low hanging fruit, the big problems ahead of time, again, that's gonna make your life so much easier. And finally, with these sketch screens, like I said, this is the initial, if it's a sculpture, this would be my boulder, right? And then, you know, of course you chip away at it to make a nice, beautiful sculpture. Uh, my Dub Dub Grub course, for example, here's what the sketch look like, and then here's what the final screens look like. So at this stage of the game, I'm not worried about the final screens for Creator View. I just wanna get my boulder in there because over time, as I'm building it, as I'm testing it, I'm gonna be tweaking the design. Again, like chipping away at the boulder as I sculpt to make the design come to life. And that's how the final screens are gonna come into play, just like they did with Creator View, going from this sketch to the final screens here. So that's a long way of saying that I am not gonna to try to make high fidelity, pixel perfect final designs. I'll just build it over time. But the main point is here is that each step of the way, going from words on a notes to my hand sketch drawings in my GoodNotes app to the sketch uh, you know, mockups in, in the sketch app, uh, the idea is starting to crystallize more and more through each step of the way. And that's why I go through that process. Now I'm gonna go tab by tab and explain the big picture of what they do. In the next uh, video, we're gonna go deeper into what I've built because I've been in a holding pattern for a little bit. We'll talk about that in a second. But big picture, right, I have a dashboard. That again is to be a summary of the entire app. I wanna surface the most important pertinent information so they can look at their dashboard, get a big picture view. It's basically what a dashboard does. The next one is an income stream, which is basically replacing my spreadsheet. I have columns of incomes. It totals up your, you know, your total for each month, you know, your estimated taxes. And then there's another tab that has all the charts. Again, there's only a couple charts in there now, but this is all the, all the data visualization cool stuff I wanna do. And then you have the video schedule screen, which again is the drag and drop of videos, like I mentioned uh, when I described the initial idea. I just wanted a super basic, let me name the video, maybe say if it's sponsored, if it's a live stream and, and change the color based on that, whatever, and then just drag and drop. Because as a content creator, my schedule is constantly changing. I'm constantly moving videos around, that kind of stuff. So I wanted something easily drag and droppable. So that's what this is. And then the channel stats view is nothing unique. It's gonna pull in you know, your, your subscribers, views, watch time, videos published, some basic stats about your channel. We already have this in a YouTube creator app. So this is not anything new. The main reason I wanted to include this, and I'll be pulling this from the YouTube API, um, but the re reason I wanted to include this was again, to have everything in one place. That way they don't have to leave creator view to go see their YouTube stats. So nothing special here, but basically putting this in here for convenience. And speaking of APIs, back to the income screen, some of you may be wondering, right? Cause I have all kinds of income streams from AdSense. I could pull that from YouTube. Maybe if you had Patreon, you could probably pull that from Patreon, right? There's all kinds of different APIs. I might be able to pull this data in rather than having manual entry, which is what it is now. But if you've ever dealt with APIs, like relying on third-party APIs is always a dependency and you never know, right? YouTube has changed their API many times. It screwed over some apps but not even just YouTube. If I'm reliant on you know, the hundreds of different ways that YouTubers can monetize, right? Teespring, what, whatever, relying on their APIs and it's like the spider web, that's just a nightmare. You know, If one of them shuts down or breaks, I gotta adjust it, or if a new one comes online, I just think it's, it's much better to have them manually enter the data, in my opinion, at least for me. Again, that's my preference because sometimes the API doesn't return exactly what you want. I, I just think manual entry is the way to go from a user experience and from just the headache of dealing with a hundred different SDKs or APIs that you have to hit, whatever you would have to do to get the information. I just think it's better like that. And I think a lot of engineers will immediately reach towards automating things and, and trying to basically pull in all the data. 
And again, I think that, I don't know, I think you can over-engineer stuff. I think, I don't think that's the way to go for this app. Anyway, the taxes tab, big picture, is just a list of your basically tax write-offs, right? Like when I buy this camera that I'm looking at, that's a tax write-off for my YouTube channel. When I buy my MacBook Pro to do my YouTube tutorials, like that's a write-off for the YouTube channel. So just keeping track of all the stuff you do as business expenses. So come tax time, you can write that off. So again, this sketch file is really where the idea starts to come into focus, starts to crystallize. I can like, it becomes more real than when it's just, you know, my hand-drawn sketches or notes in a notes app. And another thing I'm doing uh, at this stage of the game when I just have this sketch done is I'm trying to laser focus in on how this is good for YouTubers. Because right now this is just replacing my spreadsheet at this current version. And it's nothing really unique to YouTube at the moment, right? You can see how you could pretty much plug in like any business into this. So I don't have any great answers right now, but just so you know, the focus that I'm going on over the next few weeks is okay, what features can I add or how can I change things? So it is like uniquely YouTube. Like YouTubers will know like, oh, this was created for YouTubers. Like how can I make that obvious and beneficial? Not like, oh, this is a general business software that I'm just plugging my YouTube channel into. I don't want it to be that. Again, I want it to scream, this was made for you, YouTuber, specifically for you. So I gotta work on that. So after this sketch is in place and the idea is starting to materialize, now I start thinking about my data model, right? And I bust open a spreadsheet like you see here and I'm going screen by screen, kind of building out my rough model. And again, I'm not gonna get everything perfect at this stage. I'm trying to again, get the big picture, you know, formulated in my head. So I'm thinking about my big picture objects, how they will interact with each other at this stage. And I create this spreadsheet that you see here. Another reason I create this spreadsheet is because I wanted to assess whether CloudKit was a good fit for this app. Spoiler alert, it turns out it is, with some concerns. So one concern I have is that uh, this is gonna be a very private app. Like I don't want everybody's business information on public CloudKit database that I can see or anyone can see. This is uh, private. So if you know how CloudKit works, uh, anything you put in the private database is basically only the user can see, but it counts against their private CloudKit uh, allotment, right? Whatever CloudKit you pay for. I don't know what you get on the free plan. I think I'm on the 99 cent plan and I get like 50 gig, but whatever the user gets, that's where all their creator view goes to. So I had to think about that and creator view is nothing but text, but if I was uploading images or having a lot of data heavy stuff, that might be an issue or I might have to figure out how to work with that. Um, it's actually a reason why I didn't do this in the MVP. I may do it later, but on the tax sheet, like, yeah, we're listing off all the tax items. Wouldn't it be cool to upload a photo of the receipt so you had everything all there? But again, the reason I didn't do that was because I was concerned about this private cloud-based storage and I didn't want to have like a ton of images up there. I don't think that'll be an issue in the long run, but again, for the MVP, it was just a headache I didn't want to deal with. And I was like, you know what? I can add that feature in later if people request it, if people want it. And the CloudKit assessment was important, which again, why I did all these exercises, because uh, the Apple ecosystem magic was important. Like I said, when the Mac app is eventually released, I want to be able to bounce back and forth from my iPad to my Mac and have my creator view data all up to date. Everything's in sync, right? You know how your notes app works, right? You, you type a note on your phone and you go to your MacBook and everything is up to date, good to go. Like I want that ecosystem magic for creator view because I know as a creator, I'm constantly bouncing around between my phone, my iPad, my MacBook, my iMac, like heavy into the Apple ecosystem. And I want all that to be synced up in creator view. Now, the final piece of the puzzle to making the MVP a reality is I'm creating a separate LLC, a separate Apple developer account for it, because that is the downside of CloudKit. Even though I get the Apple ecosystem magic, you can't transfer an app off your Apple developer account to another person. And this is the event, Creator View is a wild success, and somebody offers to buy it for $20 million down the road, right? Something crazy like that, or any acquisition, right? I want this to be a completely separate entity, not only for acquisition purposes, but maybe I do decide to you know, make it its own startup, its own business, hire more, hire a team around it. Like, I don't want it to be bundled in with the Sean Allen YouTube course business, right? I want it to be its own separate entity. So for that, I had to create an LLC. But the LLC was the start of the domino effect that really delayed me for a bit, and it's gonna lead into the next video. Uh, but I couldn't create an Apple developer account without the LLC. I needed an Apple developer account because you need the Apple developer account to use CloudKit, right? So you see, I couldn't start implementing the CloudKit stuff into my prototype until I had, again, the developer account, couldn't have the developer account until I had the LLC. And the LLC took like two weeks. I won't bore you with all the details, but it held me up for a good two weeks in the whole process. And during that process, I was just building out the UI with like dummy data. Cause again, I couldn't use CloudKit to like persist everything. So in the next video, I'm gonna walk through basically my build at this moment as of August 18th and show you exactly what I built, how I've built it, all that good stuff.